here. Welcome to uh, the introduction to the electric earth. I'm Andy Hall and I'm your naturalist and theorist for electric earth and talking about landforms and mountains and rivers and canyons and mesas and plateaus and how they were formed. The uh, place I'm at here is uh, the, uh, the Cacho Mountains, southern Arizona, and I'm sitting here next to some friend squatter men. The uh, <clears throat> archaic uh, petroglyphs all over these mountains are pecked into this desert varnish on the rocks all over this area. The, uh, these are believed to be Hohokam by some. Others believe them to be older, archaic, uh, from maybe 10,000 years ago. There's evidence of uh, settlement in the area as far back as 10,000 BC. <laughs> and, uh, and then the Hohokam were here and uh, settled in the area. And, around 900 to 1100 AD, and then uh, they may have pecked some of these. Maybe there was an event that caused that. But um, maybe they were pecked over time, and over the centuries, by different people. You saw different events. But they're pretty interesting, and uh, there's a lot of them out here. The reason I wanted to introduce you to my YouTube channel here in front of Squatter Man is because that's how I found the Electric Universe, Thunderbolts. Because I saw a little uh, film clip of Anthony Peratt on television. I think it was Ancient Aliens program, <laughs> perhaps. But I saw his plasma instabilities and description of petroglyphs. And, uh, you know, I grew up out here in the Southwest and there's lots of petroglyphs like these. This is only an hour from my home. And so it really caught my attention. Here's a guy who has an explanation for these weird things on the rocks, which nobody else has ever been able to do. And plus the fact that they're found all around the world, and they're the same thing found all around the world. It's not some kind of... Uh, uh, well, it's an event that was witnessed around the world. That's the only conclusion you can draw. Of course, archaeologists have their own thoughts about that, but um, we'll get into that some other time. Uh, so when I saw Peratt's work, I said, here's a guy who has an answer. Finally, somebody's got an answer about something that uh, is pretty indisputable to me. And I'm an engineer, so I understand the the physics behind the plasma instability that he was talking about, at least in general terms. Electricity, plasma, electromagnetic fields. Come on up here, Ginger. Say hi. This is my buddy. She travels to petroglyphs with me. She hikes in the mountains with me to look at features and chases Bigfoot. She's a Bigfoot chaser. So, um, so I discovered the Electric Universe because of Peratt. I went on, I'm onto uh, the websites and looking for you know, 
Google searching for Anthony Peratt and petroglyphs and plasma, and I ran into thunderbolts. And from that point on, I started reading you know, Don Scott, Walt Thornhill, Dave Talbot, and all the other contributors and their articles, the Thunder Blogs, the uh, Space News, and uh, EU presentations of different types that are on the website, and, and then started searching other websites, of course, and found Walt Thornhill's Hollow Science, Anthony Peratt's Plasma Universe, and uh, everything clicked from there because everything started making sense. I think uh, the universe became brighter at that point, more in focus. So, anyway, that's where I got started thanks to Anthony Peratt and Squatterman. And so this is the kickoff show. And, uh, and from here, we're going to go mostly to look at geology in the mountains here in the southwest around where I live. And there's some terrific mountains, terrific geology to look at. It's, it's, in fact, it's probably one of the best places in the world because of the variety and oddness of it. It's unusual. And so the unusual things are the things that help you see extremes and understand the extremes of what's going on. And I don't know. I'm learning a lot by being in the mountains. And so I'm going to take you with me. And uh, that'll be the show. It's a, uh, uh, a continuation, if you will, of what Michael Steinbacher did. I'm going to do it in my own flavor and tone. And, and I have my own way, you know. I'm not going to be Michael Steinbacher. I'm not trying to. Uh, I did learn a lot from Michael, and, and, and you know, he obviously turned me on like everybody uh, who's interested in EU geology started probably with Michael. And he was out in these mountains. He was in uh, Picacho. He did an episode on Picacho. And I'm in the Picacho Mountains. Not, not, uh, you wouldn't recognize the spot I'm at from where he was filming was in another spot, and I'll do a little piece on that on another segment, but um, it's it's a strange uh, formation. It's a lightning fulgamite is what it is. It has windblown drift against it. It's made of welded tough. But Michael spent a lot of time in this area. He used to live in Tucson, I think, briefly, and he did an episode on the Catalina Mountains and on the Tucson Mountains and on Picacho, as I recall. I'm going to go to each of those areas, too, and add my two cents and about the geology and the formation. Everything I'm looking at, seeing, and theorizing about is pretty consistent with what Michael saw. I think uh, I have some engineering background, and so I understand, like, you know, seeing shock waves, recognize what I was seeing. But Michael was always seeing these triangular buttresses and saying they're windblown features. And he was right. He says, I don't know, they're windblown. They look like they're wind. Well, they are. And uh, unfortunately, I had a little background in. You know, had seen supersonic flow and the patterns that emerge from it and recognized the waveforms. So he was absolutely right. They're windblown features. And, uh, they were created during, by supersonic, hot, ionic winds. A huge electrical event was going on and it welded the material together. And these rocks are good examples, but we're not going to get into the rocks. There's a lot of rocks around this area, and we'll have plenty of time to do that. Right now, Ginger's burning up hot. The sun's blazing in our eyes. So that's my little introduction, and we'll go from here and uh, talk at you later. Come on, Ginger. How did you get up here? She's got four-wheel drive, so she can go all over the place. She's quite a mountain dog. Come on. Oh, okay, buddy. These are the Catalina Mountains. This is my home range. I grew up in Tucson, and I've been exploring these mountains since I was 11 years old. We'll take a close look at these and other mountains in the region to understand how they were formed. We live in an electric universe, and with that understanding, it's possible to reinterpret geology. Earth's magnetosphere, atmosphere, and crust are integral to the Earth's electric circuit 
and looking at that circuit will give answers to how lightning, winds, floods, and volcanoes shape the land. We'll find clues not only to the Earth's history, but clues to mankind's past too. This is a story that's never been fully told. There is an objective truth to the universe, governed by physics we can understand. What better place to start understanding it than the ground beneath our feet? Welcome to the Electric Earth. For more information on the Electric Universe, visit thunderbolts.info. Visit my website, thedailyplasma.blog. And if you like the content, please hit the like button, subscribe, and forward to your friends. Help us spread the reality.